So we begin this episode with what I interpreted as a significant slight, but my okay. co-host may disagree with. Oh, it's not a sl- okay. Come no, on. it is a slight, and we're gonna we're gonna no. get into it. Let me lay come the foundation, on. then we'll go in. So Rap Caviar yesterday, Friday, posted uh, a tweet with a question. It was a Mount Rushmore. It has Drake, Kendrick Lamar, and J. Cole on it. And it says, who takes the fourth spot on the Mount Rushmore of the 2010s? I believe the poll options were then Future, Nicki Minaj, Kanye West, and Lil Wayne. And the, the, wow. So I, we put this in our chat. Noah and Avery, you can, you can share your respective answers. I, my first, the first thing that came to mind was just Kanye. That's what yeah, my gut reaction was Kanye. My gut reaction. This is after seeing, this is after seeing LeBron tweet that it should be future. And I, and I didn't look at the poll either. I didn't see the poll. I just saw this and I was like, oh, I think. Yeah, I didn't even know there was a poll. TV. I didn't even know there was a poll until somebody said something. So. And then I looked at this and I was like, I think, well, let me say, I saw the poll. So maybe that's why my, my mind was more narrowed in, in terms of who my choices were. But I was like, this is, this is Nicki Minaj. What do y'all mean? What that's do y'all mean? Answer. That's a good answer. That's a good answer. Once people saw, once people said, I was like, "Oh shoot, that's a good answer." Because we're thinking like, they saw. Oh my god, that's terrible. <laughs> my thing is just Kanye Actually, West. No, it's, yeah, it's we terrible. say this all the time. Kanye West's best albums came out before 2010. Is that a my, 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 my beautiful dark twisted fantasy came out 2010? That was 2010 exactly. But yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. I also I agree. You all know same with Lil Wayne and my well documented love for Life of Pablo. Oh my gosh. Three. I came out like 2016. So I just see this stuff and I'm like, yo, I can't. And here, look, this let me finish for y'all. Say I'm jumping on y'all. I can't interpret. Well, not even y'all because y'all, y'all aren't the Twitter people I was saying. I can't interpret or give any other excuse for why you wouldn't say Nicki Minaj other than like misogyny and rap. Because you can't deny, there's no other artist that's had anywhere close of the cultural impact of Nicki Minaj. She was arguably had a bigger cultural impact than both J. Cole and Kendrick. Cultural impact, hear me out. Oh, hope not, not rap ability I in I did the waiting. What'd you say? I thought I did the waiting. I hope's here. Oh, hope. good. <laughs> my my love like speak. I don't Why know. Why not? Why don't you just hop in the rest of the hope, hope, go not? ahead. Why not? Go ahead and join the conversation. Okay. Why not? Why not? And we'll uh, we'll explain to everyone why you're here when I guess it makes sense. You know, I you thought know. I did the waiting room and then it Wait, do I have time to go like get some coffee downstairs? Yeah, go ahead. Do whatever yeah, you want. Ahead. That was great. Hope. Yeah, actually, you know, that was a great tease. Who was that voice? Stay tuned. <laughs> Stay tuned. Uh okay, 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 okay. Let me get let me go. Okay. Uh I'm gonna let you finish now. I'm gonna let you finish. Okay. I know you want to finish. I'm gonna, let you, I'm gonna let you finish. But uh um I actually do agree with that. Like, even though I'm not, I'm not the biggest Nicki Minaj fan, if we're going like, this based off like success, like just basic like success, which I think we're talking about too, because there's no doubt that Drake, Kendrick, and Jake are the most successful rappers of the 2010s. Nicki Minaj gotta be in there. I, I agree. She gotta yeah, I be agree. in there. It's you just, just thinking awesome. about it. Thinking about um, it, she got to be in there. She got doing to. some critical thinking past like thirty seconds. You're like, yeah, Nicki Minaj should be in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Once you're like, oh yeah, Nicki Minaj got to be in there. It's not. Even and a I question. think the more curious thing about this is reading the comments and seeing the people who people were saying, oh, it's not Nicki Minaj, but Future. LeBron saying Future and James Con saying Future. James Con, <laughs> Wale. That's Wale. a good album. From that's from people oh, said like Wale. Album. People said Big Sean. No, no that's no, ridiculous. No. And I was that's like, ridiculous. y'all are willing to put all these people over. Nicki Minaj, like that's 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 misogyny. You're just you're afraid to look look some way saying Nicki Minaj deserves some praise. Yeah, the only ones I could like genuinely think of were like, or like that I believe really genuinely deserved a shot was like Kanye. That that's the only one I was like Kanye. I didn't I I get Future because Future was like popping, but he didn't get to that level until that Dirty Sprite two album. Mm-hmm. Remember that? Yeah. That's when he that's when he went to the mainstream level, and that's when he started doing numbers, numbers. He was still on the mixtape stuff, <laughs> dropping five mixtapes a year. Kanye is, if, if they did like a best of the 2000s, i put Kanye there instantly. Oh, yeah, oh, he would be on there. Yeah, a, a topic of like, what are, what do you, who do you predict about Rushmore for the next 10 years is going to be? Ooh. Oh, Avery, write it down. Write I'm it writing down. It down. Dang, if we, the, said, if we made this list... listen... If he made this list in 2015, Chance the Rapper would definitely been on there. Now he's oh, not in the top sure. 20. Now he's not in the top so, 20. <laughs> Avery, write this down because that is an episode. I'm like, who who, who we would have thought made the list but didn't? Stu- so stay tuned for next week. We would have thought Chance. Wait, but. Avery, I don't know. A little a little technical issue on the side. I can only see like one of you. Is that just me or do I need do I have my camera, my thing set up? You wrong? probably need I to change your little thing. 
Technical difficulties on the podcast. Sorry, guys. I'm just, I'm not... We haven't done this in a while. <laughs> you know, the Zoom has so been long. like three weeks, four weeks. The Zoom weeks? thing. The Zoom thing has been a while. Okay, so. so I don't know how to fix this. So we're just gonna leave it as it is. <laughs> wow, so you're just not gonna see me. <laughs> I don't know what to change. And now the pod knows I don't know how to work this. It's a whole thing. But look, welcome to the 97 Double Podcast, where we give you the latest in uh, music, music news, a whole bunch along the way. But today we're doing a review. We've been doing a lot of reviews recently. We're talking about Olivia Rodrigo's uh, debut album. It is an album, Sour. Um, my wonderful friend, God sister, and uh, Taylor Swift fanatic, and also uh, uh, interesting... Um, order of the gen z tiktok era spirit Who don't i get that this? label i want that label you're the correspondent no oh. you know how they say like you you couldn't cross you couldn't cross the line so hope's in the stand clubs you're right you know she she she's she's making the she stand. runs the twitter account she runs she does the twitter, run the twitter account. Account. <laughs> i aspire to the gen z label that's crazy <laughs> like I'm not like super in like Stan Twitter. Oh, I didn't I even realize you. <laughs> now you need to fix this. How do I fix this? I don't know what do you want me to do? No, you're I'm fine. Need, like see everyone. I could only see one person at a time. And I'm now he just it. doesn't know how to work. So. Oh, you need oh, to fix that it. thing. Sorry, yeah, you need sorry, to fix sorry, that thing. Sorry. It's not who's. I did it. Yeah, I did it. I did it. You fixed okay. it. There you go. Okay. I did. There you go. There you go. There you go. Oh, I didn't even see. So look, you're wearing the shirt. She's wearing the fear, the fearless Taylor Swift shirt. She's ready. So she's ready for this. Is that wait, when, how messy my room is? Oh. When when did that album come out? 2006, 2007? 2008. 2008. I was close. You're close. Is that is that is that shirt from 2008? No, no, no. This is the Taylor's version shirt. I um. Uh, oh, I didn't see that. Old pictures on wow. it. Wow. She can't use any wow. of her old album artwork. Like that's all owned by Scooter Braun now. And so these are like tour pictures and some stuff. Some of her, sorry, I have like a cold, so that's why I don't sound normal. Um, but like some of her old tour pictures are actually taken by her brother because she let her brother be like a concert photographer. Mm. So she owns Yeah, I, I like that. Spread the bags to the family. Yeah, I was between this and like a different design of the shirt where the, um, like the text went vertically. But then I realized that like when I tucked it into pants, nobody the, could see like, it. Text would get cut off. So then it would say like, fear Taylor. Oh, exactly. that's really funny. Which fear is Taylor. funny. But... Which you should fear Taylor. I think you should. But so yeah, look, I, mean... I was like, if we're reviewing Olivia Rodrigo, who's Taylor Swift's son, we had to have a Taylor Swift stand on the account. You say obviously. son? Taylor Swift's son? She is. So Swift. another episode I'm pitching, I told Hope this yesterday. I can't say what I want the title to be, but I want to do an episode about who generationally has clearly inspired like the next crop of Good artists. Word. You know that Nicki Minaj lyric? These is my son that's what i wanted to call it oh okay 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 i see what you did okay gotcha. okay so we'll, we'll get there later but hope thank you for joining we're gonna get to that in a minute but before we do that let's get into headlines the first and arguably the most significant okay. the honestly the least significant the, yeah let I me can't believe j cole's in two of these headlines namdi what did you do is he really oh i read <laughs> the j cole stand dumb <laughs> is happy for me right now um j cole wrapped up his nba time uh, BA. Um, <laughs> this man said NBA Not like NBA. he was in the playoffs with LeBron. <laughs> his professional debut, his professional basketball. Okay, debut. okay, that's better. That's better. That's better. Um, played three games, five points, three assists, five rebounds. Can we? Can mm-hmm. we don't know if we have. I don't know if we have to get into his performance there. Look, that's five more points than I could score. So good for him. There you go. Well, I'd hope it's not five more points than I could score because that's kind of. They're well, like your height. I'm very small. There's yeah. Let me chill. Let me chill. Mm. Um, but yeah, so apparently he, he had a contract that was for three to six games. He left uh, because of a family dispute uh, or not sorry, family obligation, two very different things. Um, so he left a little bit early, but I'm kind of interested in this critique that someone sort of gave him. There was a player uh, for the Morocco team who was not a fan of J. Cole basically being a part of the league. He thought it was kind of disrespectful. Um, yeah, essentially the guy was saying, you know, we he said he was somebody asked him about it and he was say, essentially saying you know you're taking somebody else's spot during the pandemic a lot of guys you know were struggling with their career um and you know this is a big opportunity for them and essentially he's saying j cole you know took somebody's spot that that's not there but he did also say he said i guess it's a good thing because you know it gains popularity it gains traction where's that league. part huh he says that he says that oh in this one it's not in this article it's not in this article because it, w- it was one where it was specifically about that. It's not in this article. Oh, wait, Avery, but, click right there to the right. Sorry, no, go on. 
Yeah, that's it right there. That's the one right there. And everybody's pulling the net. He did say there's some positive. There, there is the word positive, but there was more negative than positive, I would say. But he was saying, like, I guess there's, you know, uh, you know, some upside to this because, you know, more people can see it, you know, brings popularity to the league. So, so yeah. You know, and that's my, I, I, I think this is a very valid, valid criticism. And I, I'm going to swallow my, like, just being a fan to ignore that because my response to it was sort of like, you're starting a brand new basketball league in Africa, which is going to just need more resources inherently because of that and mm-hmm. need more attention and exposure. Like really, like it took, it took, a, it takes a long time for international basketball leagues to get really prominent, yeah. you know? So having the attention of a rapper, can you imagine if like they were trying to form a league in, in, in someone, gotcha. someone say somewhere in, Ru- in like Russia, even though they may already have one and, Dr- and they got Drake to play a couple games like yeah. that would, that would do some yeah, stuff yeah. for for sure. So yeah, I no, think, it's a double-edged sword for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because then it's like is, he was the twelfth guy on the team. It's not like he was gonna play the whole season anyway. It was yeah, a I also like game I also did kind of disagree with this because like he played three games and he wasn't that good. First of all, so yeah, like, yeah, he exactly. Was at the end of the bench. Yeah, Someone so it's like get that spot later. Did he take a guy's spot that sucks already anyway? I mean, J Cole really sucks, but like <laughs> I doubt he took a guy's spot because the team is gonna be well aware of the fact that like this guy is not staying the entire right. season. So true, 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 true. Yeah, it, that's why I kind of sound like being a hater. Like yeah. it's disrespectful. I kind of, I kind of disagree with him. I get it, but like I kind of disagree with him. So. I could see him getting. I get him getting mad though, because yeah, like, for sure. it's, and this isn't I, even your team, by the way. This no, I could see him getting mad though, because it's like he feels like somebody that's not in the space that hasn't worked in the space is like coming in there now. I mean, I would feel a type where you guys would feel a type where somebody came and see you're like, who's like, oh, I just started practicing a year, a uh, couple months. Now I'm here. I'm gonna take somebody's spot, you know. If like, I if I was creating my, a brand new news station with zero audience and like I was shooting for the best, and for, and Don Lemon and Anderson Cooper came in. Okay, no, they're no, the, that's not, not the same, people, not like, the same, people. not the okay, same. Then Drake, Drake came in and was like, "Yo, I've never done this news thing, but I want to give it a try." You think I'm gonna say no to Drake on my little, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, news show? That that's that's different though, because then uh, that that's totally different, bro. That's a completely if, parallel thing. I don't know. There man. are people I, who thought, who who, who, are, who have a weird thing to argue about. Forever. We don't need to argue about some random hypothetical. I don't know. You're right. We'll, we'll take this off pod. We'll take this. And what? Off. In what? In what world would a rapper decide to be an anchor? No. What world would a rapper like? Uh, when has a rapper been able to successfully go to a basketball league? A lot. Master P. Okay, Master rapper, P first of all, Master rappers P's talk about example. playing basketball. This is literally okay, their life. No, but no, that doesn't that doesn't make the analogy any less true. It's still someone who doesn't deserve to be in a field jumping into a field. Yeah, because I'm of with that. I see. I was on J Cole's side. And now I'm not. Okay, well, look, then this next, so this, this is a, a more positive headline that I think we're all happy about. Um, Rena Sawayama starring alongside Keanu Reeves and John Wick Chapter 4. Exciting. It's kind of like, I'm sure it's going to be a role, like, you know, like Boban Marjanovic was in John Wick 3 for like a hot second. And he got, I think it's going to be John more than Wick. that. I think it's going to be more than that, though. I don't know. This makes sense. I feel like I feel like Rena Sawayama's gonna kick some ass. I feel like that'd be great. Too. That'd be I think awesome. She's gonna kick some ass for like a hot second, just like give a bah, bah, shoot somebody, and it's like, hey, I got the for what you to do, da, da, blah, 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 you know. Well, she's like Japanese, right? So she that'd be cool if they, she was like they're like in Japan. Yeah. Or what if John Wick just mercs her in the movie, bro? That's what I'm saying. That's, That's what happened well. to Boba. That, that could happen too. John could be Wick like an, she could be an assassin trying to kill John Wick. That's exactly. Ooh, I could actually ooh. see that. Because that's cool, what Boban yeah. was. Remember in John Wick Three? Yeah, I, I he's in the library remember. trying to kill John Wick. So, is this the one where the pictures came out of him on a horse with a samurai sword? <laughs> is this that movie? I think that was in the last one. Wasn't oh, it? that was the last one. I'm tripping. I'm tripping. Yeah. Yo, he might be in a plane this time. <laughs> sick. John Wick just makes me laugh because it's literally just a movie about a guy killing people. It's, it's awesome. It's, it's, people. it's just Keanu. It's, it's just Keanu Reeves. It's, it's just, just so just, good. No, it's just Keanu Reeves. That's all. <laughs> it's just Very Keanu Reeves. These movies are so good. I'm excited. And then uh, groundbreaking. Rolling Loud Festival. Y'all, are we going? Can we finesse it? Tickets are going on sale June 1st. I actually thought about looking for... Um, it's in California. Uh, when is it? It's December 10th through 12th. Oh, I, I really considered buying... I'm, I'm considering buying a ticket, but... The page, you know... It's gonna no, be gotta, we, gotta be, we, gotta, we gotta make sure things align. The way my account that. set up, you feel me? Like... Yeah. <laughs> You know, like, uh, this honestly, a I'm, this I'm a probably, this, uh, yeah, it's a hell of a lineup. Kid Cudi, J. Cole, and Future, the three headliners. Along with Chris Brown for some reason. 
Uh, and then who are some of the other big artists? It's all hip hop. Like I like how they have Griselda just all together, just right here. Just yeah, yeah, because yeah, Rolling Out is a is a is a is a is a rap festival. It's strictly rap festival, I believe, right? Yeah. So well, have they had, haven't they had R and B acts before? Did I make yeah, yeah, R and B, but like they're yeah, like, all like they you know here too, like Cash Page is in here. Yeah, but they're all like you know they're all in the same world. Yeah, know, okay, so. I got you, I got you. Like so, they would so. have a pop artist type stuff. I got you. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So it, it should be exciting. So uh, I don't. I think I see more Dreamville people go. on here. Duke Deuce is on here. A lot, uh, a lot of great artists and stuff. Oh like man, that, and so. Loot are on J Cole's. Those day. are boys. Boss, like Boss, Rico Nasty. So it should Those be. Those are fun. gonna be fun. Wait, can I just wait? Can I also say this about J Cole? Yeah. J Cole, like he he be he be putting on for the team when he gets these deals. Now I don't want to mm-hmm. assume that he just got the deal, but it's like look who from Dreamville's on here. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, not, not surprising at all. Yeah. So it should be fun. Maybe J. Cole and Amina will do a, a, a collab with the same song. They'll do the same song, perform the same song together. Oh, Earth Gang's up here too. Fun. Dreamville, bro. He putting on. So I wonder everybody, if I'm getting J. everybody Cole, that's on the Dreamville think, album is on here. J. Cole's gonna bring out Amina to perform a, a collab with their two songs. Maybe the he's on there. He's on the same day too. He's on the Maybe same. Maybe they'll day. just wrap it at the same time. That'd be kind of weird. <laughs> Two festivals, they just like, yo, what the heck? <laughs> Chanel West Coast. <laughs> she's on there? Yeah. Wow, she's dope. <laughs> yeah, no, I know you're jumping in. We had um, a lot of Chanel uh, discourse last week. Chanel West discourse last week. We did. We did. Yeah. Um, let's slide through new releases. I don't know if there was that many big things we want to talk about, but uh, a couple of cool songs. Who, what, what did y'all listen to? I listened to the DMX album. Whole thing? And, yeah, I listened to the whole thing. Uh, I'm not the biggest DMX fan. I'm not gonna lie. Like I wasn't the biggest DMX fan, um, but I definitely respect his place in hip hop and who he was and whatnot. Yeah. And uh, I actually pretty much enjoyed it. It was a lot of like a lot of features and stuff like that, um, which I'm not uh, mad at. Song with Westside well, got because there were probably a lot of unreleased verses if they did it posthumously, you know? Yeah, exactly, exactly. A lot of unreleased verses and whatnot. So I, 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 I personally. Um, enjoyed it. it. It was it was a fine album. The locks was on there. Jay Z and Nas had a song. I was bad salt. Just... Yeah. How was the Jay Z and Nas song? It was good. I I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. So it's interesting that they got Jay Z and Nas on there together. But uh, I like yeah. the song with the uh, was it Benny and Westside Gun. It was all of them. It was all of them. It was kind of yeah. like Benny that was and good. Westside. That was good. So that was a good one too. Yo, Jay Z and Nas have been getting on song because then they do the DJ Khaled album too. Wasn't there yeah, a song? That song was bad. Ooh, that song I didn't. Real. That song oh. real bad. That song was oh, bad. Yeah. That song was bad. That song was yeah, that bad. was bad. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, that was bad. That was bad. That's how they bad. tried again on DMX's album. Yeah, yeah let's, just, let's try it. Let's do this again. Yeah, but... What about, what about Killer Remix? Did anyone listen to that? Eminem, Jack I did. Ooh, yeah. That was okay. not good. That was okay. not good. So, so yeah, not it's good. not good. It's not Eminem's good. Eminem's verse is horrible. You know what's like, so crazy? No, no. Eminem's verse is horrible? It's so bad. I'm mad about that track because when people are on tour, it's like, yo, man, Killer Remix is crazy. Corday. Okay, well, okay. Okay. Jack Harlow sounded fine. Corday sounded fine. The first like twenty seconds of Eminem's verse sounds fine, and then he starts doing the fast rapping thing. And it, just, yeah, it didn't sound good. But but let me oh. tell you, because Twitter set me up. It's like, oh my gosh, y'all, the bars in this song is crazy. The remix. First of all, the production's terrible. It sounds bad. like a it it's sounds bad. like a two year old could have done it. It was terrible. You could have made it. I'm just, it was it was bad. It was bad. <laughs> Dang, don't equate my skills to a two year old. Okay, like, but you're not a produ- back there, Okay, I'm saying it was a very simplistic and not good. Not actually, not, simplistic don't mean bad. No it was easy. just not good. It, it just was. Good. It was. It wasn't good. And then honestly, Jack Harlow and Corday sounded fine, but the verses went that crazy. See, this is the thing I be talking about Corday. Mm-hmm. I like Corday, but I think people kind of go crazy. Oh my gosh, bro! I was like, he was fine. He wasn't like, he didn't go crazy. He he did not go crazy. Okay, and Eminem did not sound good. He it was needs, so bad. Oh my. He, he needs to stop doing I, that weird voice. Stop forcing that. But voice. He goes so fast, and it just like is not in rhythm with literally anything else on the song. It makes no sense. It it, it it didn't sound good. It didn't sound good. I personally was very very. I liked with Harlow that. and Corday's verse, but I wish it was just those. Yeah, two. Har- Harlow was like, "Yeah, hey, I'm on a song with my. I don't remember." Yeah, that was that. cool. That was fine, but it was just like, "Yo, sound- this isn't bad yet." What do y'all mean? This is not that bad. No, go to Eminem's first. I'm telling you. Go to Eminem's first. Right, let's not get copyrighted. This sounds like you know what this is. Remember Logic album. Remember that. Yeah. I remember the song. He's talking about like being a dad and stuff like that. It's very corny like that. It's that. It's that type of corny. So I get why not be like it. So um. <laughs> speaking of speaking of good songs though, uh, this Russ song I actually enjoyed. I'm not a big Russ. I did guy. not listen to this. I'm not a big Russ guy. He's from Atlanta though. I'm not a big Russ guy in general. I've never been like a big Russ. Gonna go listen to him, but I enjoyed this song. I enjoyed it a lot. And Options Remix by Earth Gang. Oh, good. That was good. Yeah, that was good. They also original- had another song come out. It was only on YouTube though. Wow. Uh, it was really good though. I forgot. It's called Aretha. It's really good. 
Oh, I, I didn't listen to that. That's but I'll, I'll check it out. I'll check it out. But the option song by itself, the, the remix is still, I like that one too. The remix is good too. And Koyla Ray's that light skinned girl, really skinny. Yeah. She's like on Twitter. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She gets clowned on Twitter. She's an artist. Yeah. I, she sounded fine. And Wale sounded good. So. Yeah, she sounded fine. So I have no. Oh, and let's talk about another shocking development in music. Uh, young That's boy, never. Sorry. That song really isn't that bad until you get to like the it's, fast part of Eminem. It's part. literally Eminem. The structure. No, there. but I'm saying it was a very disappointing song because people were hyping it up, saying, "Oh my yeah. gosh, Corday murdered it," and I was like, "Oh my gosh, I'm expecting Corday to just have a verse where he just goes in." I thought it was gonna be like a hard hit beat. It was a weird, corny, like weird beat. I wasn't expecting. Yeah. But let's forget that song. Uh, everything different. Young boy never broke again. Rod Wave. I do not listen to these two artists. Produced but, by. Yeah, by Kawhi Leonard. Curated yeah. by. Is a producer. I say curated. I say curated, curated. like, like a DJ Leonard. Kelly thing. Kawhi Leonard. Um, yes, the Kawhi Leonard that's in the NBA. I don't uh, want that to become a thing because all that you say, that, all that means is you have money and connections. Yeah. Like, I, well, I, no, I well, that well to was doing it a while ago. He said yeah, he, he said it was another project. I don't know okay. if like the money was going to benefit someone or something like that. Yeah, it is. Know. I forgot what the cause is. I forgot exactly what the cause is, but it's for a cause. Like the money is going towards a cause, and it's yeah. like basically Young Boy Never Broke Again, Rod Wave collab, and he's just curating it. Yeah. I the guess. project's called Culture Jam. So, so yeah, so. And okay. then we have all these other, you know, Latin pop songs. Avery hopped on. Right on <laughs> Did you yeah, listen so to any of them, Avery? There's 100 Mionas by Bad Bunny and Laura Lael. That was pretty good. It's Bad Bunny. It's a banger. And then K Mas Pues by J Balvin. That was awesome. I really liked that song. That was great. That was great. And then my favorite, Natalia Lafricade, came out with her second uh, Un Canto por Mexico album. Which is just great. She's such a good singer. She's a, she's an amazing singer. So Avery, like I don't know what okay. they're saying, but this I don't know what they're saying, but they all sound it, so it, good. It, it feels it just feels right. It feels good. Uh, and um, then also California by I, I don't know if you guys listen to Eighty Eight Rising, but they're awesome. So I don't know. I haven't that song like I've heard of them. Wait, is that what kind of genre is it? Avery, what kind of feel is it? They're like pop rap. Before. It's with uh, Rich Brian and Nicki. Yeah, and all them. I feel like I've heard of that. I they came out with an album Rich, a couple of years ago, right before summer, and it was awesome. And they had a song called Midsummer Madness, which was great. And this feels like kind of like that vibe, like a good summer song. It's called California. That's very good. But I'm going to check it out. Okay, friends. So now we have a, we have another review on our hands. Whoa, second, favorite second, releases? Executive re- I mean, we got to make sure to ask that. Yeah, but we're, we're, we're <laughs> running on the clock. So, we're, so we have, right, um, we have um, another review, second consecutive review we're doing. Um, this one, I think it was pretty widely anticipated. Olivia Rodrigo's debut album. And I keep on emphasizing album because it is not an EP. It is an album. That's check. Originally planned to be an EP. And we're going to get into that. It's um, basically as short as, never mind, I'll leave it. No, we're, no, no, we're, we're going to get into that. It's actually kind of where, where I kind of want to start. But, um, so we're going to get into Olivia Rodrigo, who's sort of like this, this Disney Channel star. She started in the High School Musical series and re- dropped this I didn't what's the other one called it's high school musical the musical the series the series the mu- sorry the musical the series yes. and she was in um, something before that too i forgot what it's called what was it if it starts with a b i'm gonna look it up and do my googles hold on yeah do your okay. googles and then interrupt me when <laughs> when you got it um but no it's kind of cool because she, she did the Disney. she was a disney channel uh kind of era star then just sort of dropped driver's license and i hadn't heard of her that much before because i didn't watch the show but that turned into a behemoth of a single. I think it's still like one of the the, the, the uh, most successful, or I think like most bought song this year. It's, broke a ton it's, of your, it's your dream lead single to follow up on our cover. I think I read it six times platinum. I really hope I'm That's not incredible. lying about that, but I think it is six it times became a platinum. Pheno- like a phenomenon. Bizarre Dark Horse the show. I'm probably lying about that. Six times platinum is sort of insane. That's, That's insane. Quick. But she, I just know it was incredibly successful of a song. Um, and honestly, to my surprise, she she uh, they announced she was coming out with an album, and I say I was surprised because I remember last week I sort of brought up the fact that um, I I sort of got mad at J Cole for putting uh, the climb back on the album because it came out a year ago, and I was like, oh, I don't like when artists do that. The big asterisk with that was that oh, it was triple platinum, by the way. The big asterisk with that is that. For new artists, that's what you do. You drop a single and you sort of ride that wave and raise oh, momentum for yourself, mm-hmm. and then you drop an album. Now, maybe Olivia Rodrigo, she didn't have to do that because Driver's License was so big. Hope, feel free to join the conversation whenever you're ready. Maybe Olivia Rodrigo, you know, she didn't have to do that because Driver's License was such a big, like, smash. Mm-hmm. But it was definitely surprising. So as we get into this, I kind of want to start there and just get you guys' thoughts before we even get into the album. 
just thoughts on this being an album instead of an EP and whether or not you think that helped or hurt your impressions of the project. It helped. Um, I don't know why. I have, I have a good example here. Go ahead, bud. So Lord dropped the Love Club, right? Oh my God. Ago. Lord Stan. I am a Lord Stan. So she dropped the Love Club and then she came out with an EP, which is like, was it three or four songs? It was not long. And then she came out with Pure Heroin and tacked on those three or four songs to Pure Heroin, which made, I love that album, but it made it kind of like very eclectic and like very unfocused, I would say. And it was like a showcase of what Lord can do before she came out with her masterpiece, of course, in melodrama. But I thought that when I, when I heard that Olivia Rodrigo was originally supposed to put out an EP, but instead put out an album, I was very happy about it. I was like, okay, it's gonna be something a little bit more like focused and concise. So I actually uh, hope, I want hope after she finishes chewing on whatever she's chewing to tap in here because that's so funny you brought that example up because she literally quoted that exact same thing when I was talking to her yesterday. She brought up Love Club. Mm-hmm. You spoke and to I Olivia feel- Rodrigo? <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. No, no hope. Okay. I was talking to Namdi <laughs> about this yesterday and basically I saw a video of Olivia Rodrigo. It was either, um, I don't think it was the trailer for her album. I think it was an interview. And she said that originally Sour was going to be an EP. Uh-huh. And then with the success of Driver's License, they were like, let's just go ahead and make an album. Um, and I know that like, I feel like she's kind of done something similar to Love Club because something, I was re-watching a video this morning. I was, I think it was in her like New York Times Diary of a Song video that they did on Driver's License, but basically her producer that was her collaborator on this album, Dan Nigro, like, before they started working together, he saw a video of her, like, that she posted on Instagram or whatever, of her singing Happier. So that song has been around. Mm -hmm. Mm. So it's kind of like Lord of the Love Club, the Love Club and kind of like putting these songs on like different projects, except she wasn't like out yet. I mean, you know, I have like, Nomdi and I were talking about this yesterday and I could let you guys like talk first. I have like mixed feelings about the album. It feels like an EP to me, you know? And I was gonna like that's a, well. Let me ask you a question, Avery. Royals wasn't on Love Club, right? I don't think so. That was on Pure Heroin. Were any like the big hits of Pure Heroin on Love Club first, like uh, Tennis uh, Court or Royals or any of those? Like, was there? A, I'm wondering before I make this comparison if there was like a huge hit on that. That like then I think the Love Club over. was the big hit. Before. Oh, Love Club was a big hit. Okay. I think the way I feel about it, and we're going to get into the album now, but I was sort of underwhelmed. And I think overall, and I'll get to this when we do our, our opinions at the end, when you listen to this album, it's what it's 11 tracks, but 39 minutes or 30 minutes is very short. 35 minutes. 35 minutes. Album. Was it 11 tracks? Is that right? 11 tracks, 35 minutes. You know, and they're all very short songs and you sort of, and they're all sort of about one topic. Um, there is sonic variety. But the actual content of the songs are kind of about one topic. I mean, Hope talked about that yesterday, too. Um, and I think it sort of underserved her for this to be the big debut album. I think if this was an EP, that just would have made more sense. Because when you think of some of the other huge releases we've had from pop artists, and I'm, I'm not saying this in a comparative sense, but just in a relative sense, when I think of like a Billie Eilish, she had an EP first. When she had her big song of Ocean Eyes and that was everywhere for a while, she bought an EP that sort of and rode that wave and then gave us this complete comprehensive complex so, masterpiece of uh when you're all asleep where do you go i heard a theory about olivia rodriguez and i don't know like if we can get into that now about another album she might be dropping soon see now if that oh happens I'll eat all of my words hold on are we getting okay are we are we getting into kendrick damn like no, 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 no. level I, of I, conspiracy maybe, theory know. it's a TikTok conspiracy but it makes uh, sense it makes sense I would hope she does, honestly, because that would, I think, make this make a little bit more sense. But, you know, let, let's let's get into let's get into the actual album now. So, um, see, Nandi, I, I kind of have to disagree on everything, kind of having the same subject yeah. matter. I do think it is a little bit limited. And I was actually like I was in somebody's like TikTok live and she was saying like they have that. <laughs> yeah, TikTok wow. live. You have to have a certain wow. number of followers. Oh, to, like, OK, 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 OK. Yeah, no, I mean, and this woman is like a full adult. She's like a, she's like a project manager and like a film critic for the New York Times. And I just like sit in her TikTok live and like talk to her. But she was like, I feel like she's going in like five years, she's going to regret making her like entire, or I guess like at least like 90% of her debut album about like this boy. 
Um, that she I, do, with me I do agree that if there was some more of like kind of variety in the tracks, wow. hope you're okay, wouldn't be so like, I guess jarring. Cause I saw a meme and it was like, you know, people like highlight parts of the album. It was like, I hate myself. I hate you. I hate myself. Gay rights. Like that was ah. <laughs> kind of like the subject matter. And I do see that, but I think that it's also like, you know, it's it's like a first heartbreak album. It's called Sour. It's about like resentment and like angst. And I think that she does kind of like go at it from different angles and like different points of like processing throughout the album. Although at times I think it still does like feel redundant. Um, and also on the songs being short, I wish Good For You was like a couple seconds longer. Mm -hmm. I, wish, mm. I wish after the last like verse or like the bridge or whatever it is, I wish that she just kind of like let the instrumental go a little just, bit just more play out. Before, before she like says the last line and the song is over. You know, well, I kind of like where you're going with that. So you know, why don't we why don't we start with what we knew about the album before the, the singles we had? So we had Driver's License, Deja Vu, and Good for You. Uh, what did you all make of those singles? And did you like? Were there any of them that you liked more after hearing them on the album? Well, I personally have to say that um, I think the singles fit perfectly on the album personally. Like they flowed perfectly because sometimes you hear a single just because it's a single and you've heard it already like months before it sometimes sticks out but you know when you get the driver's license it just kind of flows through which i think is a really good thing so um i thought it was a good way how they fit the singles because sometimes you know you put a single out and you want it to pop and you want people to like it which is a big deal also but you also want it to fit within the context of the album which i think it did personally maybe good for you is the one that st stands out in between like you know, the driver's driver's license, deja vu, good for you is like the most the, the one that differs the most from those two. But I still think it fit the um, overall uh, theme of the album as oh, uh, just described. Yeah, and I think like I sort of wonder if it would have been better for her to put something in between deja vu and good for you. I like I think driver's yeah. license kind of takes the album to a new emotional height because I was listening to I it agree. this morning and it's like brutal kind of sets up like the angsty teenage girl angle right and honestly like when i listen to that song and like jealousy jealousy i'm like wow the the angst that i experienced as like a teenage girl like growing up on the internet i feel like the people after me and how the whole like especially because she's famous like the microscope of the internet mm -hmm. is like making it worse um but then like traitor kind of sets up the premise of like how he like did her wrong, right? Like what she's gonna be talking about on this album. This boy. And then Driver's License takes it to like its emotional height. Like it is the like heartbreak ballad. Like it is the heavy hitter. You think that should have came later? No, I mean, I think it, I think it works where it is. Okay. It's kind of like how, I mean, and I'm gonna be pointing out ways that it's like, she is like a, a student of Taylor Swift, right? Oh, she does. Because on Taylor totally Swift is. albums, it's always track five where like shit gets real. Like that's, people were pointing that out as a joke. I don't think she realized that she was doing it in her album sequencing, but people were just like, oh, what, like you always make track five something like really intense and depressing. Oh. And then I think she started like teasing that more. Um, but I think that like, cause then you get one step forward, two steps back, which is more down tempo. Yeah. It's and like- Taylor has writing credits on that one. Yeah, like cause it has- the um, song, right? It has the melody mm -hmm. to New Year's Day, which is the mm -hmm. last song on Reputation. Yep. Mm. But she didn't actually sample it because if she had actually sampled it, the money would go to Scooter Braun. Um, uh, so she just used the melody and she played gotcha, it. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, That's but about I, her and Taylor are so cool. Now. Yeah, Taylor like, does have writing credits on that one. So yeah. So let me. So let I. I kind of. So so we know the order for our audio listeners. Is that I like where we're going with this conversation about how she sort of structurally sets this up. So it comes in with brutal, which is sort of this like. I will say the one song that doesn't feel like it's about the same subject is brutal. It kind of starts and it's, it seems really introspective, sort of speaking about insecurities, uh, kind of the rough edge of the edge of the sort of being this young Hollywood act. Um, uh, sort of I feel like you don't. It, She's it's still talking wrong. to him. She's still talking to him. Yeah. Right, because she says, like, I'm so caught up in the news of who likes me and who hates, who hates you. you. Yeah. But I feel like this one is just sort of like a different, like, scope. I yeah. mean, yeah, the scope feels different. You know, this, it feels like it's more, it's more of a, it almost is like more of an analysis of herself. Cause I thought there's some things that I, who, uh, I quit my job, start a new life. Cause who am I if not, uh, if not, broader topic. And yeah. they'd be also disappointed. Cause who am I if not exploited? I'm 17. Where's my effing teenage dream? Like the the whole. Who thing. am I if not exploited? 
Karl Marx wishes. Our bourgeoisie queen. Write that banger. So I remember Avery, when we were in a, when we when this album first came out, we were on our trip last week, or, or corporate rec- recruiting trip. We played this um, song. Yeah. You played this song, and I remember saying this is an incredibly strong track, and I was way more happy to find out that it was the intro. How do you think it sets up the, the tracks that follow it, both it's Trader and, I hear. and uh, both Trader and Driver's License? Since there is kind of a contrast in sound, it's a big sonic contrast. Well, for me, I got so excited. I love rock music, obviously. And to sort of hear her, like, start going down this, like, after after she came out with Good For You, I was like, oh, is she going to do this, like, yeah, Alanis this Morissette, yes. kind of Avril Lavigne kind of thing? That's what we thought. Like, let me tell you, I know it's, like, different. Well, first of all, I think what it does is it's, like, you're going to this album, like, it's already called Sour. She's like, bitch, we're doing angst. Wait, am I allowed mm-hmm. to curse? Yeah, um, absolutely. It's your absolutely. career. Absolutely. She's like, bitch, we're doing <laughs> angst, like, right off the bat. But also, like, after I watch Good For You, and I have a lot of things to say about, like, Good For You and her, like, music videos and just, like, how, like, well she's doing. Mm -hmm. But, like, I listened to Good For You and I was like, ooh, holy shit, let me watch, let me listen to, like, some No Doubt now. Like, Mm -hmm. I know it's, like, not sonically, like, that similar, but I feel like other people were, like, oh, Paramore, and I was just, like, it's, like, in high school, I used to joke that my favorite kind of music was, like, angry woman music, and this just really speaks to that. Like, I was like, oh, let me go listen to Tragic Kingdom by No Doubt which is like Gwen Stefani's 90s, like ska-ish band. I mean, I think Tragic Kingdom is a ska album. Please don't come for me if I'm wrong. I, I'm not- I think you're right, I think you're right, yeah. Um, but yeah, like Tragic Kingdom is like their like, I think like their quintessential breakup album, it's like their rumors, because people in the band are mm-hmm. breaking up. Um, and so yeah, like that's what Good For You made me want to like go listen to. After I listened to that on like a loop, but I, I, I'm still curious though, were any of you, did any of you feel thrown off from the shift from Brutal to Trader and Driver's License? So the fact that it, it, it the, this rock thing doesn't continue, it goes to a, a slower pace almost. Well, let me tell you what I was gonna get to when I talked about like, what if she put something in between, like one of the down tempo songs in between Deja Vu and um, what's it called? Good For You. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I have like sick brain right now. Um, but like, it's like what Taylor does on Red. So like the whole kind of thesis of Red is that it's about like intense emotions and like a range of emotions because red, the color red is like the most um, like intense or saturated and it's on both ends of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's like, I'm pretty sure that like in the track list you get like All Too Well, which is like a five minute like heartbreak ballad that's considered by many to be like her best song. And then like 22, like she puts those pop songs in between like gut-wrenching heartbreak songs and I feel like Olivia was maybe kind of taking notice of that to like give us like a little bit of like a yo-yoing give us a yeah I, but is this a like, yo-yo though the it's range like, of emotions bru- in this experience it, yeah is this a yo-yo if it's brutal yeah, and then like, later the driver's license on red, one like, step forward deja vu and then back to good for you like it is a, a pretty substantive gap of like yeah rock-ish songs and then slow tempoed more emotional introspective songs well yeah and i mean i think she chose i was listening to that video that i told you about yesterday namdi about deja vu and she says that like so the interviewer asked her like if there was a pressure with the second single after the success of driver's license and she said that she had the singles or at least she had she knew before they put out driver's license that deja vu was going to be the second one like they already had that figured out and she chose it because she's naturally more of like a ballad girl. She says, sorry about that I message ding, oopsies. Um, and like, so she did that to show that she can do like a mid tempo pop song. And she killed it. Yeah, I, 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 I personally, I thought it was a great intro. Uh, you know me with these kind of albums, guys. I, I, I need some energy. And I think this was a really good song intro, you know, a good intro for some with, with some energy on it, so. I, I enjoyed the intro. You could think about was... like Phoebe Bridger started with Guarded Song and then went straight into Kyoto and then went Yeah, exactly. Like, you know I mean? Exactly. Like, Even though it's a different feel, Kyoto has like a different yeah, feel. Yeah, but these feel like, like, like these yeah. feel like like high points and then she's like going absolutely, down and she absolutely. building up again. And then like, like a high yeah. point. Driver's like, License I, ends with that crazy iconic bridge now, right? Like yeah. um, it starts yeah. building up. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I agree. We need we need points of energy on an album. And also, though. like you know, it's her debut album. Part of this is a showcase. Like she's gonna be like, hey, this is what I can do. I almost what, wish she leaned more into the pop rock. That's what, that. You know what's so crazy? 
I thought it's interesting you say that, Namde, because I thought she was going to lean more the other way. Because like, no, when I, first... absolutely, I absolutely. Okay, okay, okay. I definitely thought that at first, especially because you know the first two singles were driver's license at Deja Vu. But when she came out with "Good for You" and then I heard "Brutal," I was you like, like oh, really good at this. Like, I hope I see more of this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I don't think you really you really hear more of that beyond those two songs. My, my, I agree. Forgetting about one. No, you're right. I, almost, I, I think the little they were they were replaced well because you know you start really high. You kind of go lower with Trader, Driver's License, one step forward, three steps back, Deja Vu, which you guys were not going into because they're all sort of about the same thing, as, we, as we've all kind of said. It's about her breaking up with this boy and then she's down what that is later. Starts dating someone two weeks later, as she says you know, Allegedly. Every time you almost feel like it's going to get too redundant because how slow it is, she does kind of give you good for you place right in the middle of the of the album. So, you know, you're you're, you're back up with energy and breaks it up a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Breaks it up a little bit. I I, 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 totally, I totally agree. So. So, yeah, you know, it's interesting. You guys are talking about how, like, you know, the, the subject matter is very similar, which I totally agree. And that's kind of a, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. It kind of sounds like it's a detriment to like the album. Like you see it as a negative. I you know, it's disagree. huh? No, I'm, I'm, I'm I, I, yeah, I disagree with that. I disagree with that personally because like it's her first album. She's but like, not, I'm sorry, I kind of missed. It sounds like what's a negative? Sorry. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but when Hope and not Hope and Omni at the beginning, you guys were talking about how like um, you know, a lot of the same su- subject matter, a lot of the same feel. She's talking yeah. about the same things over and over again, and it sounds like not necessarily you're hating on like it's bad, but it's like uh, that's something that could have improved on for me for me personally i kind of roll with it because she like she's 18 she probably was singing this when she was 17 or something like that i thought she was 16 i thought she was Isn't she 17 now she's 18 she's 18 now oh, wow. um, I mean, yeah experience might have happened at 16 but yeah i mean i i have a mixed feeling about it too yeah i, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing because it's like her debut album and i think this is a great chance because then the fact that she has brutal and good for you on here anyway already it's just like, oh wow, where she's gonna go with the next album? I think it's just really a good, yeah. a good debut for her, and it gives her a chance to grow. You know, a lot of exactly, exactly. This is like the seeds for something bigger and more creative she could do down the road. For I me. feel like the other side of that, though, because I, I feel I have mixed feelings on it. You know, my positives are like what you're saying. This is her experience. You can tell all these songs are personal. She wrote like I have no doubt that she wrote on all. Oh these yeah, songs. that's the other thing that's so um, great about this album. Yeah, yeah, you you, you it's can so tell. Personal. It's she gets, very personal. It's very and vulnerable. I, having being able to have the, channel that level of vulnerability in your music at you know sixteen, that's a talent. You know that one that uh, the last young artist who could do that so well was Taylor Swift, maybe maybe Lord. Um, so like that is definitely a plus. I just think for me, it also sort of like you kind of said. Every uh, I feel a debut album is supposed to be a showcase of what you can do, where you can go, and I feel like that extends to subject matter as well as um sonically um and i even think sonically i wish she showed me more of what she could have done i I do wish she she kind of threw more of the pop rock and i just think as your debut release i kind of want to know more of you than just this relationship you're in i disagree with that that. i disagree with that because i think that like what this easily could have been was 11 cookie cutter like sample like pop songs that could have been so generic that could have had empty yes. platitudes but what it ended up being was like 11 songs where like yeah they're kind of all about the same thing but you can kind of hear her going through the process where she starts out where it's like it's brutal out here by but by the end of it she's like hey i hope you're okay i'm over it now yeah, yeah. yes exactly like i think that it is sort of like red and that it's like taking you through the motions of it yeah. and also it's like one like she she was like 16 17 when this happened to her that's very intense you know, into yeah, the world's like, against you. It's public we, too. Look, hey man, we've been inside for a year. Like nothing's <laughs> happened to us. It's yeah. okay to just write about one thing. Yeah. yeah. You know, like you, I don't know. <laughs> you know what? You know what, Namdi? I don't necessarily you're saying that as like a negative, but I think you're saying Namdi, like she could have gone even deeper. It's kind of like a thing. Like she could have been even because you know, because because yeah. you know, with artists, I think with like a debut album, I'm kind of agreeing with you. Like they have to showcase, but also kind of like, and this is a thing, you know, that I always hear like the first album. Jay-Z said it, he's like, this is the album you've been working on your whole life. And kind of you want like a, you know, sometimes people want like a life story with your debut album. And she didn't necessarily give you that. She's talking about like a particular experience, which I think is still fine. And she's still an artist that's, you know, improving as a songwriter, which she can eventually get to with her second, third, fourth, however long she, you know, is doing music. So I definitely, I, I could hear you now saying like, she could have gone deeper with more like a variety of topics to like kind of fit into one theme. Yeah. But I'm not mad with the way she did it because considering she's such a new artist, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, I'm, I don't. 
Go ahead. I was just saying, I don't think the alternative is is 11 cookie cutter songs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think we've seen that, and that's why. But I, I think of like, oh, I hate, I'm not, I don't want to, I'm trying not to say other names, so I don't want to compare. Um, so I think this this is good in its individual right. But again, I don't think other young artists have been this massive as Billie Eilish. And I think when I think of that debut album, it felt much more complex and layered and varied. Granted, she had her brother, who maybe that helped with the process, but that's why they got all the, the, the sort of acclaim it did. And I feel when I see this, she has these three behemoth tracks on an 11-song album that all sort of talk about the same thing and feel the same way. You have Good For You and Brutal, which are different and I appreciate, but a lot of these songs feel the same way and do kind of risk becoming redundant at a certain point. I think that's so fair. This, if anything, this, it sort of speaks to my original sort of thesis and feeling that this should have been an EP. It makes Ooh. sense as an EP. It would have been... <clears throat> releases an EP, I guarantee you it gets immediate acclaim, immediate praise. Olivia Rodrigo, her debut album. getting that right now, though, as an album. Yeah. That's, but no, that's... I think right now as an album, and this is sort of me, I've seen some people on Twitter say it, I told Hope this yesterday, as an album, I think it's a twinge underwhelming because Ooh, it I does disagree. sort of absolutely fair to disagree. But for me, it feels a twinge underwhelming because she had, she, she has the huge, 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 huge track of driver's right. license and so much appeal and momentum that she's riding on that she should have had the time to really develop she shouldn't have had to rush an album three months after that song she mm. should have had the time i feel like she's had these songs like hope yeah Spence, that's what like, i'm wondering that's them, the, my thing my thing is if you had the songs release them as an ep like every other new See, i disagree because if she had then, to me like if it's not if it's not obvious already i like this album a lot yeah. but like if she has these three songs and i can listen to the album and like a week later be like oh i love brutal i love traitor and i like hope you're okay a lot like if i can pick out these other songs that i also think stand out with these three songs on this album like i, I just have to disagree and, and and this is the thing too like if it was an ep we're thinking what six five tracks right uh you know we're thinking an ep so is she gonna put brutal driver's license and good for you on the ep and just have you two can, new songs i don't can. There's a way to make a seven track EP on this that's called, that ends up becoming the most uh, well released and acclaimed. Uh, I feel you. Well, okay, no, my, well, let me just, my, my full feeling on it is just that if she had more time, I think, to really develop her sound, narrow what her focus, and do the uh, damn thing, we could have had an amazing proper debut album. And I think y'all have to remember, tough, y'all have to remember, there's a reason that they say this was envisioned to be an EP. There was a label that said, no, Driver's License is doing really good. You need to figure out a way to make this an album in three months. It that's it's, what, to me, it doesn't that's suffer. I don't, like, too, I don't like, know it necessarily that that's what happened. I don't I mean, want to. I'm going to loosely, if it says it turned into an album after the success of Driver's License and not after the personal development of the artist, no. That, that means the label saw this as an opportunity and didn't want to waste the momentum she had, Dang, which is bro. fair. But that's what it is. So that's okay. that's my personal thoughts on it. So, so Hope, what were you about to say? I'm sorry, I think I cut someone off. I was just going to say that I don't know for sure that it would like that was the like origin of it being an album. I do like she mentioned the success of Driver's License, but I think she also probably made this because I couldn't find the video where she said it, but like because she knew that she can show more. I mean. With the, the, the conversation that's going on now, I think, like, both things are true at once, you know? Um, like, I do think that, like, with the kind of, like, flow of the album, ha- uh, Hope You're Okay is a little bit jarring. And I do think that depending on what mood you're in, it can get a little bit redundant. But then it's like, what would you cut? Yeah, I mean... I mean, I get, I, I, I get everything everybody's saying. And the thing is, it's like, it's just a mood album. It's just a mood album. You have to be in a certain mood to listen to it. And that's not necessarily a detriment to, detriment to me. You know, I, lo- I love mood albums. When you're in a certain mood, this, when you're sad, just got your heart broken, this is going to eat you up from like one step forward, three steps back. That's one of my favorites. Um, and Happier, also one of my favorites. Um, I don't know, man. I, I, I think, I think, I, I think it works. I definitely get, and I don't think. I think Avery's like, okay, I get it's, it's, it can be samey, but if it's good, it's not necessarily a bad thing. And that's another thing I want to get into is like, the fact, you know, the fact because I'm actually shocked by like kind of Nambi's response. He's not saying this, but I'm not saying you think it's crap or anything like that. But this is like, from what I'm understanding, it's like a universally accepted album right now. People are really hitting this up and loving it, and um, it's really interesting because. Um, 
you know, I put in some articles from The Ringer and Glamour, and I just want to speak on this, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I don't want to hang on it, but you know, when I just put in Google, uh, Olivia Rodrigo, the thing I'm seeing all these articles is geriatric millennial, you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. That, that's the word I'm seeing a lot on articles, you know what I'm saying? And definitely we're getting a people I consider us Gen Z, the generation before us, millennials, are really eating this album up because it is taking them back to a time of like, um, uh, Avril Levine, it's a Levine. Avril, Avril, yeah, Avril Levine. Levine. Levine, Levine, Avril Levine, and stuff like that. And obviously Taylor Swift and whatnot. It's taking them back to a time. I literally thought of, <laughs> y'all gonna laugh at me. I literally was like, man, this album is perfect for like Lemonade Mouth. And like if, when that dude got his heart broken or something <laughs> like that. Like it literally felt like something like that. I don't know. Uh, I like that movie though. Did you see Pitchfork's review talking about universally acclaimed music? What they said about this? They gave it a seven though. Pitchfork is months, like rude, or, though, no, isn't this is sort of okay, how we've fun. established no, no, Pitchfork's listen, no, listen, bad track we record. We don't, we don't always mess with Pitchfork. I completely acknowledge that. But I will say this, I think, has some of Just listen. Four months after Driver's License, Pop's newest star offers a nimble and lightly chaotic collection of breakup tunes Ooh, from Melancholy and Mischief. I don't know if I'm going that far, but a yeah, nimble collection of breakup tunes is sort of how I feel about this. That's yeah. fair. I think that's fair. I'm I, I'm not and saying, I, and I want to like, I, by no means am I saying this is bad because it's not. It's not a bad yeah. topic. I listen yeah, no, to it. No, no, I think no. it, I think I, I want us to get into pros soon, but uh, you know what what we think our strengths, and I think one of the strengths of this is all the songs are short, all the songs are very catchy, and all the songs feel raw. That alone makes for a good a good album. I'm not denying Absolutely. that aspect or piece of this conversation. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's going to be a behemoth on charts because it's easy to listen to. I, I sat down and before I knew it, I listened to it three times because it's 30 minutes and it, all the songs are catchy. Brutal comes around and you get excited and want to listen to it. Go 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 for one more ride, you know. Completely acknowledge that. So I don't want to make it seem like I'm I'm downplaying what she was able to do four months after. I don't she think you are that massive song. Um, I mean also, to, to bring in the perspective that only I can bring, <laughs> um, but it's like, especially with tracks like Brutal and Jealousy Jealousy, I think that it's going beyond, and this is something that I like tweeted, on, I put this on Twitter, I put it with like, um, like a, a poem about like teenage like girlhood, it's very like good. Mm -hmm. And I was, there's just something about it that speaks beyond like the breakup to just kind of like the experience of like being a teenage girl and like girlhood and like, trying to kind of like negotiate your like place and how you see yourself and how you're perceived by other people Absolutely. and all of that you know what i mean like i that's why to me i think that it kind of like especially tracks like brutal and jealousy jealousy it transcends like the breakup album thing to me yeah that's fair. Can we talk I about wanna, like oh, sorry, uh, Adrian, sorry. Go on, i was gonna go say on. i also want to point out the significance of like we have like right here we have a filipino pop star Right yeah, here. When was the last time we had a like a like a huge pop star like getting to this level who was like a woman of color? I I can't Rihanna. Like Rihanna. Oh like, well, Doja yeah. Cat maybe, but still, yeah, yeah, actually, very significant, very significant. Yeah. As for like Asian representation, like this is I think this is amazing. Right. This yeah. is incredible. Yeah, I I like when we were waiting. When I was waiting, I was like on Twitter and I saw someone in the Philippines posting like the kind of like package that they get with the album and she has like the polaroids like taylor swift and i was like i don't know if that's available here if she just did that as like an international thing mm -hmm. um and like i think that's cool because of like her heritage but also like based on what i see on stan twitter like people in the philippines they like that stands in the philippines they they go hard they show out that's dope. I too. That's yeah dope. i like that yeah. Yo, what are your favorite songs on here? I realize we didn't even do that. What do you think are the strongest tracks? Um, and I, we've sort of mentioned a lot of them, but I, I'm just curious as to what each of you think. Because Noah was like one step forward, three steps back. Avery, I think, is a brutal guy. Like, let's let's go through. Let's go down the list. Whoa. Avery, you, oh, oh yeah, Avery. Go, no, go ahead, Avery. Go ahead, Avery. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead, Avery. Uh, I mean, every single. I think all the singles are great. Oh, and so then... you like the album like that? Oh, I thought you said every track. I was about to be like, no. oh. I do like every single like one like, is a great song. No, every, all of the singles, the three singles she put out are yeah. great. And then on top of those, I'd say probably like Brutal, Traitor, and Hope mm. You're Okay, which I just named over half the album, but because I, I really enjoy this album. But clearly, uh, <laughs> um, I, I think I, yeah, I said one step forward, three sets back. I did enjoy Traitor. And honestly, I don't remember listening to Good For You. I didn't listen to a single like that. I, I told you, I, I, I literally, Olivia Rodrigo came out and I was like, who is this person? Y'all like, oh my gosh, it's the biggest thing in history. And uh, I was like, I have no idea. So I honestly, I just heard, I, the first time I heard Good For You was on this album. I was like, whoa, 
that stood out. I was like, oh, she's killing it. I was like, okay, girl, do your thing. And then uh, Happier for me too. But Good For You definitely stood out for me. It's so interesting. I listened to it on the album. I was like, oh, wow, this is this is dope. She was doing her thing. So Good For You, honestly, might be my favorite track. But One Step Forward, Three Step Back, also my stuff too. So, so yeah. My, yeah, I feel like factoring in the singles kind of complicates it for me. So I'm going to yeah. do it and singles. Because like Avery said, they're just too like- just, They're all great. They're too good. You know what I mean? They're too good. So then I think my top three would be Brutal, Jealousy, Jealousy, and Favorite Crime. Mm. I love like the layered like- um, vocals in Favorite Crime. Yeah, and the bridge I of Favorite my Crime. my friend listening to it last weekend and she, we were listening to Jealousy, Jealousy and she was like, this sounds like Lord. And it mm-hmm. makes sense because I was just listening to an Olivia interview and she talked about how much she's influenced by Lord. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Nomdi. I kind of want to talk about a little bit of like the lore of these if we have like time. Like good. No, yeah, we can definitely run it through, uh, real, real through that real quick too. And I, my, I think I agree with a lot of you. Sans the singles, Brutal definitely is one of my favorites. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a huge fan of Traitor. I like the writing a lot because that's an emotion that exists, but no one I feel knew how to yes. articulate it as well. Like you didn't. You're not cheating, like, but you traded. Yeah, you you're a traitor. Like, no, you were foul for that. Like you didn't cheat. You didn't cheat. You know, she said. She wrong. said when we say when you broke up, you already had old girl. <laughs> you yeah, with old girl. Uh, two weeks two later, later. Huh? really? You with old girl already? I right, bet. Good ass, ass, for real, Bad. for real, for real. Yeah. I think I like jealousy, jealousy a lot, and I want to get into influences too. But hope, what, what is your lore thing? I don't. I, I'm curious as to what your. Well, I don't know. Well, just like on that kind of like conversation about like the the way that she like looks at these emotions. Someone was saying like about good for you, like oh, like your your ex is allowed to to date someone new, and they don't have to ask you how you are, and you can't just go call them a sociopath. And I was like, whoa, 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 like. She's not like, I'm like, it's just a song. And it's about, the song is about resentment. It, the album is called Sour. Like, let's just, Bitter like, sweet. why are you mad? You know? Like, um, first of all, if anybody's saying like, when you break up with somebody and even though y'all broken up, when they with somebody else, you you a little hot, you a little mad, you like, yo. Yeah, really really like two weeks later. In a, yeah, public, yeah. in a very public relationship. Hope, can you like, talk about what the rumored impetus of this album is? Like the, what, that whole situation that, rumored that's after inspired this. Okay. Yeah, I guess like the lore. Um, she dated the, boy like, from the. He's on this. Show. I mean, and I, I act like I like really know. And like to be fair, like this kind of like Disney era, it's like past my time. I'm a 20 year old now. Like I, Whoa. I was like, what is this shit the kids are talking about? I'm so yeah. confused when like Driver's License came out. But Olivia Rodrigo is on this show oh, called one High one. School Musical: The Musical: The Series. Yes. With this dude named Joshua Bassett, they're co-stars. They were dating. He is who this album is supposedly about. He's like two or three years older than her because she just oh, she wow. turned. She's a Pisces. She turned eighteen in like March. He's my age. He's like my my roommate who's twenty one said that they're said that he's exactly a year younger than her because she looked it up and he has the same birthday. So she, he's like six months shy of 21. And so of course the song Favorite Crime raises my question, which was why was he dating a minor? But anyway. Yeah, I was, um, I was like, uh, okay. And wow. then a, the allegedly, talking, so. yeah. allegedly the girl that's like the new girl is like Sabrina Carpenter, who's also a Disney star. Who um, also released a song in response to Driver's License. And which yeah, she tried to release it. And ain't nobody listened to it. Which was right. like so lame. And I have like a few little things to say about that situation. But I kind of wonder if it's really her because if you watch her Diary of a Song video from the New York Times, like the original line in where she says, you're probably with that blonde girl who always made me doubt. Yeah. Yep. Um, it, the original line says brunette girl whoa and deja vu so when you listen to deja vu it makes you think that like she and joshua bassett were like driving down malibu getting strawberry ice cream and what actually happened in this like this rolling stone video they talked about the the writing process they were working on another song they didn't like it they scrapped it and she just had this like hook in her notes app that was like do you get deja vu when she's with you which I assume is about this situation. But all of those kind of like detail things, they just came up with on the spot to fit the song. So it's not as like confessional as it comes off as first. So I think that's interesting in in terms of like the lore, I I don't really know. But yeah, no, when Deja Vu came out, I texted my friend and I was like, if Sabrina Carpenter was mad about driver's license, she's gonna be pissed when she hears Mm -hmm. this one. But also I just think that- You got Deja Vu when you're with her? Cause she ain't me. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I think about it like I I've heard discussion online about how this kind of like so take like Taylor Swift's 
uh, kind of legacy. She has a song in Speak Now called Better Than Revenge. And it's like basically like attacking the girl who quote unquote stole her boyfriend. And she's reflected later about how like, she's like, I'm more mature now. Like no one steals your boyfriend. That person like chooses to leave you. That's not how it works. But also just like the internalized misogyny of it all. And I think that's something about that that's great about this album is like, she's not attacking the girl. She's saying like, oh wow, I'm comparing myself to her and I feel really yeah. insecure in comparison, but she's not, she's not taking her angst out on her. She's not making it like an internalized misogyny thing. And I really appreciate that about this album. But then of course, oh, Sabrina oh, Carpenter oh. had to be like, you said I, you said I make you insecure. Well, fuck you. I'm going to make a diss track about you, mm -hmm. which is like a lot. Do you guys so, want to hear the, do you guys want to hear the TikTok conspiracy? That I heard? What's the TikTok conspiracy? It's yeah. pretty good. Okay, so they said that apparently she's been like, she'll go on like Instagram Live or she'll do like videos where you can hear other songs in the background that are not on this album. And this song, this album's called Sour. What's the opposite of sour? Sweet. And she has an endorsement with Sour Patch Kids. Oh, she, know, their oh whole thing I love is when they get the marketing sour. bag. So the conspiracy is, is that she's going to release another album with more upbeat songs and more like positive songs called Sweet. If she does that, I will eat every single word I said. And then today. watch, then a double oh, album with, then a double album with both albums on there. So yeah. it's gonna come out. And bonus yeah. tracks. Because I mean, like, then that means this is all a concept. And so if your debut albums are a concept album, I'm in. I'm right all these lane. Yeah. I'm good. I'm, I'm gonna. Now you're, now you're talking to me. I'm gonna judge it based off just this album though, because even though that's a no, really yeah. interesting conspiracy, I'm I'm gonna judge it. This is the debut this for sure. Yeah. Can I ask you guys album. one last time? Then we'll get to scores that we should probably wrap soon. Any influence that you directly heard? Because I heard a lot of it. To me, the part of the, what inspired that episode is like, this is Taylor Swift's son, clearly, with the writing. But I also, like Lord, and was good for you, that's Paramore. That is all Paramore. Yeah. I feel like I went through, like, I heard Driver's License. The first thing I thought was Taylor. I heard Deja Vu, and I heard Lord, specifically, like, Melodrama. And yeah. then I got to Good For You, and I heard, like, Avril Lavigne and Paramore. Yeah. I, it's not I, like I have, Haley Williams. I was like, you know, it's something, you know, it's something. This is not, she doesn't sound like this woman at all. Like her, her the way she sings, she don't sound like this woman at all. But it's just interesting because a song like Driver's License, you know, it's, although it's an amazing song, it's super popular. It's not all, it's not, you know, in this climate, sometimes people are like, oh, I'm surprised that went to number one. But in, in like in a world of like uh, Adele, where she has these incredible yeah. ballads of pianos and whatnot, obviously she's not a strong singer. Like Adele has a really strong, you know, voice mm -hmm. that, you know, really can take over a room. Um, Olivia Rodrigo obviously has a different voice, but you know, in terms of that ballad, you know, she soaring up and being- normalized the ballad as a lead single. I absolutely, think. absolutely. And, and yeah, exactly, exactly. Brought absolutely. back the bridge. She and making it revived the bridge. I'm not gonna say that, but she did. I'm not even Destiny's Child's been doing the bridge since. I don't know. People have been doing bridge since like 20 years ago. Olivia yeah. Rodrigo's 2021. She revived the bridge. Olivia Rodrigo revived. Oh, you saying, oh, you saying, oh, oh, I thought you said, oh, you saying Olivia Rodrigo revived bridges? Yes. Okay. Nah. So, family, yeah, because that's the whole, we're doing the best bridges episode now because that's blasphemy. But um, let's uh, do scores. Let's well, do, I, I want a minute, a minute summary and a score. We can, uh, hope you can go first. Oh, I was gonna say that when she talked about Deja Vu, she specifically named the Taylor song Cruel Summer as like an influence for like the the like yelling bits. That was it. Uh, sorry. That's interesting. Okay, we'll start with Avery. <laughs> wow. Wow. I no, think we should no. start with Hope. I think Hope. Okay, Hope, give me, give me a one minute conclusion and your, what you would rank this one out of 10, 10 being oh, amazing. Shit. Okay, one, well, two. um, I was like mad because I was pissy that you cut me off, but I actually like, okay, this is hard. Um, <laughs> you were kind of right to like try to go to me last. I was just, I was just pissy. Um, okay, I feel like I gotta give this like a six to like seven out of 10 maybe, because I really, oh, wait, is that low? I don't- No, it's not, that's good. That's, that's, you know, that's good, you're Speak fine. Your truth. I don't no, know. no, 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 it's not, we're not, we're not. Oh, look, we're giving low like scores. Five. Look, it's like above a five. Like I think I like this more than like Taylor's debut, but I don't think it's as strong as like pure heroin. You know what I'm saying? Well, I actually okay. like it a lot. Yeah, it's good. Okay. And then like, okay, a one minute summary. I think that it's like not really just like a breakup album. I think it kind of speaks to like the experience of like girlhood and like being a teenage girl. Like one thing I'll, I'll say, like I fucking love her music videos. And at the end of the Good For You video, there's a like a direct homage to the movie Jennifer's Body. Yep. And the first word in the movie Jennifer's Body is hell is a teenage girl, 
which kind of goes back to Brutal. And I really like that tie in. I really like the whole like curation that she has with this beyond just like the music with like the merch, the music videos. There's like more I could talk about. She's giving me a lot, like, even though we feel like the album is a little redundant in terms of how much thought she's put into all of the different angles to it, she gives me a lot to think about and to work with. Yeah. That's... Wait, what's your solid score? You said six to seven. What's your solid score? Six and a half is a thing too. You could do half. That's really hard because I'm not used to like ranking music. I'm like, I'm so indecisive that these kind of things like stress me out. She said right above a five, so I'm gonna say six. I feel like she. I feel like I, I, I feel a six. six. I feel a six. Yeah, maybe I'll do like a six point five or a seven. Okay. So do you want to do six and a half or seven? Uh, um. Okay. Shit. Right now. Right I now. I will go six point five. Okay. Six, okay. Five. Lock it in. No. What are your thoughts? My thoughts. Wow. Um. As you guys, as you guys know, this is not my wheelhouse at all. I do not listen to this music at all to remind us every episode i mean i think it's important to i think it's okay i don't say that every episode every time we but, do a pop review we get it okay when's the, what's the last pop review we did guys come on let's go exactly Keep um moving. yeah as we know this is not in my wheelhouse at all but um i mean listen to the album for me there was no song that i thought was like straight up terrible you know what i'm saying but um, you know, with me with music, I just need something that relates to me, and this is clearly not for me, which is fine. Um, this is for teenage girls. Um, I will not go back to this, which is not a bad thing. I will not go back to this, and um, yeah. So there's no song on there on here that I thought was bad, straight up bad. Like, oh my gosh, this is god awful. But uh, I can't see myself going back to this, and for that reason, I have to give it a man. I'm gonna give it a seven because I didn't think any song was bad. I just won't go back. To I this. thought that was not going. Wait, to if he's giving it yeah, a seven, because... can I go back and give it a seven? Yeah. Well, why sure. you? His opinion shouldn't. You know, the way you set that up was very jarring from your score. But what I said, there was no song that was bad. I just won't go I know, back. But to a this. seven's like high, so it was just like the way you were setting up was high. All right, I'll okay. give it a five then. Okay. I'll give it a five then. Okay. Jesus, hold on. I gave. Okay, what are we doing here? Fine. Give I gave a, Phoebe Bridgers an eight, and I said I won't go back to this. Why can't I give it? Okay, I, you can. I'm just, I just, all of our reaction was that it was just jarring. You're, no one's criticizing you. It's fine. Wow, so a black guy can't listen to, seven. can't like uh, Olivia Rodrigo? Everybody's like so frustrated with this calculator right now. Like, what are y'all doing? Um, I said seven. Y'all the one who okay, changed. Okay, okay. When I was at a six and a half, not, no, I was at a seven. Okay. I, what did I say? I when said I, seven. When I, to, when I try to review albums, I always try to, t- like, put myself in the target audience of this album. I think that's the only thing that's fair. So I, I'm trying to do that with this. Okay. Avery, change me to a seven. Okay. Now I'm gonna be extra lower to balance it out. I got everybody messed up. What um, the heck? I said seven, so like, you went crazy. So my, my thoughts on this album were, I've been saying it before, I think Olivia Rodrigo is showing so much potential and I think I'm incredibly now excited to see what she does next. And this did leave me wanting more. So I think she achieved that goal. And I think when I think about who her audience is of, you know, younger teenage girls kind of taking over the, the Taylor Swift fan base, at least the younger half of that fan base, um, I think she probably succeeded and gave them what they wanted, which is a really raw, vulnerable, introspective relationship, ooey gooey album with a couple high points of uh, energetic high points. Um, now, I just think for me, when I, as someone who try, looks at music in a more, um, what's the opposite of granular, broad sense, um, mm-hmm. I just hate that this wasn't an EDP. And I know everyone may be like, well, what's the difference? But I think it, the perp, the, each has a different purpose. The EP is sort of like this mini showcase where you can say, hey, I know I'm new. I know you just have heard these singles, but here's what I can give you. And then, you know, simmer on this. And so I hit you with my real, like, all of my energy, all of my effort, this debut album I've been working on that I've dreamt up for this moment now. And I think she envisioned it as an EP and it should have stayed that way because as an album, it feels underwhelming. It's not comprehensive. It's, it's not, it's kind of, it's it's very, very, it's single faceted. It feels single faceted. I know we've said she, she, she comes at it different approaches with that single focus, but it is very singularly focused. And I think that was jarring for me for at least a, a debut album. I guess I just wanted more. I think that's the. I think that's really all I'm trying to say in different words. I wanted more for Mrs. Olivia Rodrigo's debut album. I wanted her to explore the pop rock sound more. I wanted her to kind of, if she's gonna be raw, Taylor Swift has been writing about guys for decades and did so on her debut album. But each song on the, I hope I think you can attest to this, on those earlier albums, Red is kind of the first one I really remember, but even, uh, what's the one she just really released, Fearless? They may be about relationships, but they still sound different. They're still about different topics. They're still sort of like, they, they take a deeper approach to exploring all that. So I think Olivia Rodrigo will grow to that. 
I just sort of think if this was an album and she had more time to work on it, we could have seen that sooner. So I know I just said all that, but I'm giving it a seven. But, you know, because I think it's amazing potential. I am excited about where she's going to go, but I just wish there was Y'all got on me. This man over here, Ether, yeah. this album. I didn't, I didn't Ether <laughs> the album. I didn't Ether. The first thing I said is I think she she appealed to her base, and it's a good album. Get that out of the way. But from a broader sense, I wish there was more. Seven. I can't believe y'all came at me. I'm so mad. All right, I completely disagree. This I isn't in my little house, but I don't, you know. All right, shut up. All right. I love this album. I thought it was great. I don't know how you could listen to Driver's License, Good For You, and Deja Vu and think it's not going to be about anything but her boyfriend or her ex-boyfriend. I thought it's an incredible debut album. I have a soft spot for young pop stars that can, like, capture emotion this way. It's the same way I felt about Lord and, like, even Ariana Grande two albums ago. I really like this album. Uh, I'm giving it eight. I think it's great. I felt, that be, felt jarring too. I no, thought hold on, hold on. I, 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 I loved it. I gave it an eight. What do you want? That's a good score. I want to be fair, okay? Because I'm not in this genre, I don't want to come in here like, oh my God, this is not for me. I hate it. I think it's trash. Like if with the rap album, something I'm more involved in, I feel much better giving that a lower score because that's something I listen to on a daily basis and something I can give a hard score to, you know what I'm saying? Like it's something for me to go in there and be like, oh my God, I've never listened to it, but this is trash. I'm gonna give it a three. Like, I just think it's not fair. I thought every song was good. It's just, I won't go back to this, but I, I think it's you. passing great. That's why I think it's a seven for me. Got you. Avery, what no, was I our total score? That. Like, I, mean, I think the, the seven for Hope hits harder because she's in it. She's like, oh my yeah. God, I'm in this wheelhouse. And like, I listen to this music. And then like, she's like, I have some real grievances. With, I don't really have any hard well, grievances with the album. I mean, the, I mean, I give it a seven because it's like, I don't know how to like, I'm not good at ranking things, but I, yeah. I respect your like position of saying like, this isn't for me. Cause something that I, that I feel like about like criticism of this album, especially like the, oh, like it's not that deep. It's like, this is, you know, if you're, not like a like a teenager, teenager. It's a very intense thing for her just yeah. like her have yeah. this you know what i mean like stop trying to like tone police or i don't know exactly exactly that, that's why that's that's why i'm coming from so i was like i'm not 18 i'm not gonna like this. so we have three I sevens and an eight so what does that bring us to avery 7.25 total and i'm very comfortable with that for yeah, this that's a good score Zero point two score so Miss Olivia Rodrigo, there you go. This good debut. Five. We can't wait what debut. you do next. We're very excited to see see what comes after. If you ever listen to this, come on the pod. Filipino power. And keep that, keep the video, the music video. Yeah, she's too. killing Have it. you seen her videos? I haven't watched any Great of them. Videos. You good should, awesome. you should know it. Well, cause the, the Good For You video, I went like feral over because it's directed by Petra Collins, who's one of my, I have like her book somewhere. She's like one of my favorite photographers. And she used to be on like Rookie Magazine, which was like this thing that was like mostly by teenage girls for teenage girls. Like, mm. and then now she does like bigger, like Gucci, like editorial shit. Wow. But she just like, her like perspective, I just like can't get enough of. And so I love that she like partnered with Olivia on this and made it a very, like, I just think that what they did is like chef's kiss. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Hope, I really appreciate your insight. I'm not sure we could have done this episode without you. So thank you a lot for joining us. And I mean, are you officially our, our Taylor Swift, Olivia Rodrigo, that bag of artists correspondent? Yes. That no, when Folklore awesome. came out, I was trying, like, I've been trying to weasel my way on Hope was trying to get on the pod when we were a- Avery or- feels the type of way. Avery's like, yo, bro. What okay, what I've been <laughs> raving about Olivia Rodrigo for months, first of all. No, I'm saying, no, no I didn't no, say you. I said Avery feels the type of way. I'm saying. I want to point. I after Deja Vu came out, I put in our Twitter no. Twitter group. I said I'm buying all the liver Rodrigo stock. No, I was in. First of all, Avery, that's true. Avery, Avery was like, you I'm are, here. You are the correspondent, but Hope is the stand correspondent. It's a different correspondent. You're the. You're the. You're I think the... you need to work on your wording, Namdi. Wow. Uh, uh, Yo, a lot of beefs coming up in this pod. <laughs> this is a thread. Watch this in future episodes. This thread starting something. Have you guys seen her? Like her merch is really like good too. I just are you gonna I, buy? I don't know, like art direction. Wait, what are you gonna like, buy? Hope. Her branding. Hey, if you go buy something. I'm gonna buy. I'm probably not gonna buy any of it, but I can appreciate it. You know, like she I has a you. bucket hat that's like lavender <laughs> and it says like it's brutal out yeah. here, and it's like I'm not gonna like buy a bucket hat. It's just not my truth. It's not my journey. But like I like that she did that. I, I wish I could rock a bucket. Avery said I'm buying the stock, but I'm not buying the album. Wow. Interesting. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, Interesting. We, got, we have to move on because we have timing. So thank you. Thank you That's crazy. Olivia Rodrigo. That's crazy. Album. 
Um, let's try to wrap it up real quick, Bruno, with the, the highlights from the charts. Good for you, debut at number one. Kind of insane, Olivia Rodrigo's second de- uh, debut album. I th- I want to emphasize how- Oh, like, J. Cole was this close. J. Cole was close, but it is incredibly significant that Olivia Rodrigo, out of her first three singles, two debuted at number one. We uh, you know there's a difference between getting at number one and then debuting. It's very impressive. Um, J. Cole oh. number two, but he killed this chart. I think every single song from his album debuted in the top 40. So, J. I mean, Cole still is like, looking for that number one song. He is. That's sad. My that's life would have been perfect. Dang. My life would have been perfect. My life is great. Next week, maybe it'll happen next week. Keep on streaming. That's tough. Um. So that's you know, but but he did get his number one on the Billboard 200. It was his yeah. sixth consecutive number one album. 282 thousand units moved first week, which actually was lower than KOD and uh, what his early releases have been. Um. The number two on this chart, "Beat Me Up, Scotty," which is which a twelve-year-old sold 80k. So you know, 80. That's insane. That just shows the power of Nicki Minaj. Yeah, then I I don't, yeah, the, I'm not, yeah, that's very impressive, very impressive. Um, other than that, I wanted us to quickly mention, shout out to uh, Bruno Mars. He became the first artist to have five diamond singles. You guys know what the, the, the five are? Any guesses? Oh, God. I don't. Grenade, that's the way I you Was are. Your Man, which was a shock. I you Was Your Man was a sock. Um, Uptown Funk, I think. Yeah. 2014 Magic. Mm. If you scroll down, it's there, I think. What I like, that's what I like. Ooh. Yeah, there we oh, go. Oh, grenade. Oh, just the way you are. Yeah, just the way okay. you are. Yeah, just the way you are. So that's like really that's wow. that's insane. Bruno's been so I feel like people sleep long. on him a lot, but that's um you know. He doesn't have a lot of albums either. He doesn't have a lot of music on it. It's not like a, also Silk Sonic killed that live performance. They did, they did. Um, and then also, I just wanted to be predicted the Billboard Music Awards uh, two weeks ago, and it finally happened. I want to say we got it mostly right, obviously, because this is based off a of chart. So Top Artist was The weekend. That was the one that I didn't know, but it was The weekend. Pop Smoke for Top New Artist, because his album has been sitting, which was my, I, I said that, this is my there. prediction. Um, and Oh, okay. yes, it's been sitting here. 48, 48 weeks, I think that's what that said. Uh, yeah. The weekend won yeah. Top Male. Uh, I think Taylor Swift won Top Female. Uh, she also won BTS top group and then top Billboard 200 artists should have been the weekend, but Taylor Swift released three albums. Yeah, and, uh, she, tough she to beat. Got that. He wasn't. We can. Wow. We can took a lot home though. We can took a lot. lot yeah. Home. He, also, far. his performance with Ariana Grande was awesome. It's so good. Yeah. yeah. Oh wait, that was at the iHeart Radio one. Uh, yeah. Shows. Yeah. There, there, there was <laughs> iHeart. Yeah. Who cares? Who cares? Yeah. And Drake also got Artist of the Decade, which is which, well you deserved. know, I, I, I wasn't surprised. I actually, they had a chart where you could see who was, who else was there, and it was like Drake, um, Taylor Swift, and God, who was number three? Was it Rihanna? Rihanna or Ye? It was someone. It was one of them. But it was really interesting to see. I should have clicked that on there. But yeah. that was that was that. So that's I want I want spend too much time on that. But it was a. Uh, Cool to see uh, how the how the charts shaked up this week. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Project of the week. Oh, we got Dreamville all up and down here. Oh, I'm, I'm, with you. First. I'm you're, you're I'm first, my, buddy. Am I first? Yeah, hey, you're first. Um, so this album I chose. I'm not mad at that at all. You know, I just had number th- number three was Bruno Mars. Sorry, I was googling that. That's why I was distracted. It was Drake, Taylor Swift, and Bruno Mars. People will be sleeping on that man. Before Rihanna, sorry. Okay, so my uh, the Never Story by Jid, yeah, is this one of my favorites? I don't know if you grab it. I was listening to it all throughout this week when I was working. Um, we're, we're uh, Hereditary, Ed Ed and Eddie, um, um, Never, never like Ed Ed and Eddie, like, never. Like, there's just too many. All of them. All isn't of them his next hit. album gonna be called The Forever Story? Yeah, he did say that once, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He did. He said that. He said that. He tweeted that. Yeah. Yeah. So you'll have that on the on, on the playlist this week. Uh, Noah. Yeah, man. Um, this album by Boz, is too high to riot. Um, I really just enjoy this album. It's nothing special, nothing crazy. Um, just a really, really solid album for Boz. So, um, yeah, I believe this came out in 2017, 2016. So that was around my sophomore year of college. I remember listening to this album vividly. So, yeah, solid album. I enjoyed it. I like the cover, too. Mine's uh, this little uh, small album. Not many people have probably heard of it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. The Miseducation of Lauren Hill. It's a little indie, little indie project. Uh, I was thinking stop. a lot this past week about how she dropped like one of the top ten albums of all time and then just like did. And never. I think been. about that a lot. Like I think about it a lot. Especially Lauren Hill is a very powerful woman, guys. I think we don't very, understand how powerful she is. And she had she, a, you know, she had the Fuji's project, but like you know, this is her like solo album. It's one of the best hip hop records of all time. She's like, it's just. 
I don't know. I just thought about it a lot. Every song, I can't even pick out a song. They're all incredible. I've always wondered if the success of this album, she was too nervous to do a follow up. I don't know if that. No, like I was like, what? Was, it was so good. It was so good. It's incredible. I don't know. It's just, it adds to her legend, you know, being late to concerts. You know, it's just, <laughs> I want to say this part of her legacy. First black artists have a number one or black female art black female artists have a number one i think that was like one album of the year too at yeah. the grammys one album of the no year classic grammys. like i don't know yeah just I definitely more classic. classic oh we're about to have a fire playlist this week hope you have a mob of the week i know i didn't ask oh, you hell yeah um i'm gonna say bury me in makeout creek by mitski Ooh, that's oh. her that's a good one avery listens to mitski you listen to Mitski? I couldn't name you a Hell song. Yeah. Or maybe we, or maybe, oh, maybe I lied to you. <laughs> <laughs> when I get like, stri- like during like my finals week, oh. I always listen to like my body's made of crushed little stars. It's the one where okay. she like yells and she's like, I'm not going to do anything. And that's what I listen to in, when school stresses me out. But I think that's on puberty too. But still, I'm going to do Bury Me and Make Out Creek for like um, First Love Late Spring, Francis Forever, Townie. Just some good heavy hitters on that song, okay, on that so album. Just, send, send very angsty, very indulgent. Send me three and we'll put it on our playlist. Send me, send you three songs. Yeah, three of your favorite songs and we'll put it on my playlist. On that album specifically. Yeah, yeah sure. got you. Um, so, I need some demo merch coming. <laughs> you know that's a very sensitive topic, bro. We got hoodies, we got shirts, all that. Yeah, I'm from Noah's closet. <laughs> my closet. <laughs> we could share. I'll send my it to you. Copyright infringement. You'll be hearing from my lawyer. First of all, I'm. Never mind. You know what? Because you're not. Illegal. My lawyer said, "Don't say anything." My lawyer said, not. "Let me chill. Let me chill. Let me chill. Let me chill." Anyway, that does it for us this episode. Thank you guys for watching. Hope, thank you for joining. Thanks, Hope. Hope. Thank you, Hope. Hope. We hope if you listened, you enjoyed the review or not. Sweetest, and yeah, we'll see you next week.